So it seems that no major transit or urbanist channel has talked about Jakarta before. So here I am, a local, explaining this city's massively underrated system. But first, to explore a said system, all you need is a prepaid card. I use BCA Flash, this is not sponsored, and you can use this for everything. KRL, MRT, LRT, Transjakarta, paying the highway toll if you hate using transit. I'm not sure what the airport train to, I use an app for that one. All of this is based on personal experience, so feel free to disagree. Here's the section of lines I've actually been to, feel free to pause for a moment, and of course, 90% of the time I travel outside of rush hour. Starting with the KRL commuter line, it is Jakarta's commuter rail network and has 5 lines radiating outwards to Jakarta's suburban satellite cities and beyond in some cases. Serving the KRL are 8 to 12 car secondhand trains from Japan, mostly consisting of JR205s and Tokyo Metro 6000s that run between 70 to 95 km per hour. Though unless otherwise mentioned, it runs at 70 to 75. It's cheap, like really cheap. From Rangkas meeting to Bogor, a distance of over 120 km, it only costs 13,000 rupiah. For more regular commuting distance, it's often between 3,000 to 6,000 rupiah. Unless otherwise stated, grade separation is questionable and there's probably like a million level crossings. Some stations do not have level boarding, meaning you do need to jump down a couple dozen centimeters to the platform below. Integration with other modes is mixed, it's definitely getting better. Juanda is a good example, Grogol, um, not so much. The Bogor line runs north-south between Kota and Bogor, with some trains terminating in Depok and Manggarai. There is also an infrequent branch that runs about every 1-2 to two hours between Kota and Nambo. But everywhere else in the line, you could reasonably expect something to arrive every 5-10 to 10 minutes. And sometimes, trains could be as close as 2-3 to three minutes apart, so is here right? Well, yes, but actually no, because there are also random 15-minute service gaps throughout the schedule. So if you're unlucky, that could slightly ruin your day. The section of track between Manggarai and Kota is also shared with intercity trains, and that can literally cause train traffic jams and in the very worst scenario, no service for 20 minutes. Now of course, a 15-20 to 20 minute wait might not sound too bad, especially considering the frequency of, well, all the other cargo lines, and you know, this is a commuter rail, not a metro, but it's still not great. Another not great thing is the small trains. I say small, but in most cities, 8 car trains will be considered huge. That's your typical Asian mega city for you. Yes, the Bogor line mostly uses 8 car trains, which is fine for every other time except rush hour. On the plus side, they upgraded the top speed to about 80 km per hour on the section of track within Bogor and Mangarai, which is about as fast as the MRT. And this is by far the most great separated line in the system. We're talking elevated tracks north of Manggarai and weird horseshoe shaped U turns in Lenteng Agung to minimize the risk of getting run over. Bogor line, you're great, but you're also too unpredictable, so A tier. Remember what I said about the Bogor line being a bit unpredictable? Well, the Cikarang line is worse. But before that, some background information. This is a very straight line from Cikarang to Jatinegara where trains come flying in at 95 km per hour. Then you reach Jatinegara where it becomes a loop line, it looks like a tennis racket, and the top speed goes down to about 70 to 75. Some trains go clockwise aka via Manggarai, while others go counterclockwise aka via Senin. There's also a bunch of services that only do the half racket, all of which exist in the southern side of the loop aka via Manggarai and terminate in either Kampung Bandan or Angke. All this means that service is the most frequent, and I mean like under 10 minutes most of the time between Angke and Bekasi via Manggarai. While frequency is the worst in the east side of the loop between Kampung Bandan and Jatinegara and between Bekasi and Cikarang, in the far eastern edge of the line. As of making this video, I found some nasty gaps in service in Cikarang station where one train bound for Angke leaves at 1.37 pm, while the next one leaves for Kampung Bandan via Senen at 2.13 pm, which is a gap of over 36 minutes. Here's another nasty one, this time in Kemayron, Central Jakarta, which often gets less than metro-like service. Train bound for Bekasi leaves in 2.11 pm, miss that one, good luck because the next one comes in 2.41. Also, Pasar Senen station is unidirectional for most of the day and therefore only serves trains headed to Kampung Bandan aka North. Trains headed south skip the station. Still at me, well this line is also very prone to being late, in 10 to 20 minute delays. A large chunk of this line shares track with intercity trains. At least the part between Jatinegara and Bekasi is quad track, but everywhere else is double track. 
Intercity trains mainly go to Gambir, Tromangarai, and Sunen, where outside the stations it's usually only double track. But for all the problems in the Cikarang line, it is still usable, and as long as you stay between Bekasi and Kampung Bandan, specifically on the southern slash western side of the loop, you should be fine, and something should arrive within 10 minutes or so, probably. I can't memorize the whole schedule, nor can I give any prophecies on future delays. If you're riding the KRL without any specific destination in mind, and you haven't checked the schedule, just stay between Kampung Bandan and Bekasi via Manggarai. It could save you 36 minutes of your life. So overall, Cikarang line and gets a seat here. Now to probably the most on-time line in the system, and I say that as a semi-regular user of this line, I have never experienced delays in this line. This line runs between Tanah Abang and Rangkas Bitung, most trains stop either in Rangkas Bitung or Parung Panjang, and a sizable minority also stops in Serpong. During peak hours, Tanah Abang Serpong stretch of the line gets consistent 10 minute service, and up to Parung Panjang it's mostly every 10 minutes with some 20 minute gaps. Outside of rush hour, you can still expect 10 minute service with occasional 20 minute gaps between Parung and Tanah Abang. However, want to go Rangkas Bitung but miss the 10 o'clock train in Tanah Abang, good luck the next one comes in 10.40. That might be enough to go shopping. So that is understandable since once you pass this out, you do see a lot more trees and rice fields than houses so understandably demand might not be enough to justify 10 minute service. Last issue is that it's kind of slow, top speed is basically capped at 70, which is again understandable since there's so many bends in this line. 8 year. This line has no excuse running every 30 minutes of peak, especially considering the crazy population density surrounding this line, and it shows by how crowded this line can get outside the rush hour. When I first tried the KRL, the Tangerang line was the first line I tried, and all you see outside are houses, and more houses. And even more houses, and then even more houses, and yet it runs less frequently than the Rangkas Bitung line. There is a case to be made that transiting in Duri might be more brutal in some ways than in Tanah Abang, as 30 minutes of rapid transit loads of passengers from the Cikarang line just desperately cram themselves into the once every half hour train to Tangerang. Now during rush hour, the frequency does go up to about every 12 to 18 minutes, which is alright. This line is also relatively on time. This is also a very simple line. Tangerang to Duri, one line, one service, is also mostly on time. It does share a track with the airport train, so I do have mixed feelings about it taking away valuable capacity from the Tangerang line. It does have some examples of poor integration with other modes though. Remember Grogol station that I mentioned earlier? Yeah, they didn't even provide a sidewalk to walk to Kali Grogol's shelter, let alone some kind of sky bridge. See tier. The Tanjung Priok line is the shortest chiral line and runs between Kota and Tanjung Priok. I have some concerns though. First, getting from Anchol station to you know Anchol is actually kind of hard since you need to cross some very wide roads. This is partially mitigated by motorcycle taxis. But still, it's actually easier and safer to just use Corridor 5 since the buses go inside Anchol. Second, it runs every 18 minutes, an appropriate level of service for this kind of line. Unfortunately, there's a lot of 36 minute gaps, especially at noon. If this line just kept it convenient for passengers, by running it at a flat 18 or even 20 minutes, this line could have easily gotten beat here. But 36 minutes is a bit way too long considering how short this line is, and let's just say that Trans Jakarta corridors 5 and 10 seem a lot more attractive now, so D tier. I have mixed feelings about this line. It is a relatively affordable way to get from the airport to Jakarta. The ticket is between 10,000 to 50,000 rupiah depending on how far you go and whether there are discounts in place. I say affordable considering a lot of airport shuttle buses cost like 80,000 rupiah. Service is every 30 to 60 minutes which is good enough for an airport shuttle especially considering that from Batu Ceper all the way to Manggarai it shares track with Cairo trains. Some commuters have used this as a more comfortable and express way to get to and from work which is especially considering how brutal transiting in Duri and Manggarai can be during rush hour is understandable. Think of it as royal trans on rails for them. Being that I only tried this line once, I can't really judge the untimeliness of this line. But apart from that, I can't really find other flaws or exceptionally good things about this, so B tier. The North-South line, oh wait wrong city, ah yes, the North-South line aka the Jakarta MRT, since it only has one line for now, runs from Lebak Bulus to Bundaran HI. It runs every 10 minutes off peak and every 5 minutes at peak periods. 
basically no delays, level boarding, platform screen doors, 80 km per hour top speed, apparently some sources say 100 in the tunnels, but I can't verify that since the GPS speedometer doesn't work underground, direct connection with the mall, a CS courtesy refrigerator, it is a bit expensive though as prices range from 3,000 to 14,000 rupiah depending on how far you go. Well integrated with Transjakarta, especially in Lebak Bulus, where the MRT station gives Metro Trans riders weather protection. Normally, they don't have that since Metro buses stop outside of shelters. Block M has this amazing thing called Jazzway, where the MRT connects seamlessly with corridors 1, 13, and a lot of non-BRT lines. In Dukuhatas, the MRT station is just in front of Sudirman Station, and in Bundaran Hai, it directly connects to Bundaran Hai Shelter. Currently, it is a bit short, but it is still very useful and it is getting longer. As of right now, the North South Line is getting expanded to Kota and there will be a massive East West Line to, from Bala Raja to Jikara. That will basically make me stop complaining about getting Sarpong's off of public transportation. There is also a smaller East West Line that connects Patmawati with Kampung Rambutan, which is good because traffic there is particularly vile. S tier. Contrary to what some people think, this line is not useless. It has a very specific task and that is to shuttle corridor 2 and 4 passengers into Mall Kelapa Gading. Okay, maybe that's just my opinion though I swear I saw nearly everyone get off at Boulevard Utara. This line runs from Velodrome to Pegang Sandua at a flat 10 minute headway, costs 5,000 rupiah flat for all distances, and it only has two problems. First of all, it's too short, to the point that it is completely separated from the rest of the rail network. But even that is being fixed, as this line is being extended all the way to Manggarai. Second, they missed the opportunity to integrate Pulau Mas Shelter with Pulau Mas LRT station with a sky bridge. But everything else, well, it's the same as the MRT in terms of quality. Just a shorter line with shorter trains. A tier. And once they connect it to Manggarai, S tier. The LRT Jabodebek, not to be confused with the LRT Jakarta, runs from Duku Atas to Cawang where it splits with one going to Jatimulya aka Bekasi and the other one going to Harja Mukti aka Cibubur. Trains, not just any kind of train but Indonesian made ones, more or less run every 15 minutes all day except in the very morning or late evening where it drops to every 20 to 30 minutes. Due to interlining between Duku Atas and Cawang, there, you can expect trains on average every 7 minutes. Some say that the turn in Kuningan is too tight. Personally, I think that's not a problem. One shop turn isn't going to make your LRT slower than driving at rush hour. Plus the MRT, yes the MRT I talked about earlier, the turn in Fatmawati is worse. In the sense that it makes an ungodly roar that deafens everyone in the train. This turn does not make that noise. Some say that the braking is too hard, it used to be, but they fixed that. Some say that the trains are frequently late, again, they fixed that too. No, the real problem with the LRT is that it's too slow. While the top speed is 80 km per hour, which is good enough, it crawls in and out of stations, it takes turns a bit too slowly, which is a problem because the Kuningan Bend isn't the only one turn in this system. Outside of peak periods, I doubt if it's actually faster than driving. It's also too expensive. 20,000 rupiah for the furthest distance during peak periods, that's royal trans territory unless you've been getting Serpong and says we get a special price of 35,000. Minus the guarantee of getting a seat. Well, I guess it's the choice to be able to sleep in the bus or to get to work and back quicker. Now admittedly, outside of peak periods, it is only 10,000 for the maximum distance, which is reasonable and personally, I do think 20,000 is somewhat worth shelling out in order to not be in an overcrowded Transjakarta bus that's stuck in traffic. The LRT has great integration with other modes, especially Transjakarta. It's also good with the MRT and KRL. So there is definitely a bit of work to change modes with those one. It has mall integration. Can Revo Mall become the next block in Plaza? It has level boarding and platform screen doors. All they need to do now is to speed up the trains. B tier. 